start by recording yourself unraveling some sellotape. We're looking for that stutter effect here, so keep it taut while pulling. A specific mic isn't needed here, but the more isolation you get, the more adaptation you can get in post. So if you have the choice, go with a directional small diaphragm condenser. The small diaphragm will add a little bit more clarity to the attacks of each sound. We'll then need some clicks and pops, like the ones you find when playing a record. Try isotope vinyl, it's a free plugin. Time to open up your door and get down and dirty with a synth by starting with a low pitched sine wave. This is because it creates that low harm that generators have. Then change your filter to a band pass and put the frequency cut off around halfway Way. It doesn't really matter at this point, we'll get to it later. Add two LFOs to the process, both using a noise waveform, which will add a more erratic nature to the sound. Apply one to the amp module of your synth, with the amount all the way up, and then the speed at a moderate pace. This will add a stuttering effect to our sound as the volume changes dramatically and abruptly. The other LFO will be placed onto the filter. This one's a bit more finicky though, as I adjusted it to taste in combination with the frequency cutoff and the frequency modulation, which actually came to be a way bigger part of the sound than I expected. Don't go overboard with the speed of either of these LFOs. It makes it really obvious that the variation isn't just completely random. The filter module of your synth is going to be controlling the overall pitch of your sound, whereas the frequency modulation is going to be adding some nice tone and some weird textures. Play with it. You can see my settings on the screen now, but build from it. Or don't. The synth is going to provide the base of the sound, which you can work from to add the clicks, pops and sellotape from earlier. This will create a more detailed, complex and what other word sounds interesting. When you're layering these sounds together, rendering the synth track will be a good idea as it will mean that it's not constantly changing every time you play it back. Your effects chain will look something like compression, distortion, EQ and reverb. Slap that compressor on to tidy up the sound and maybe add a bit of snap to each attack. A fuck ton of distortion is a key part of this sound and for once, I'm not even joking. There's just not enough high end information or abrasion otherwise. EQ time, me boosting the hell out of 3 to 5k really helped to fill the synth out. I wouldn't usually recommend finding a sound you like and then just boosting the fuck out of it, but in this scenario it really helped and it didn't cause any problems, so what the hell? The low frequencies are going to be filled with that generator styled hum which we put in our synth. I didn't find 8k onwards to be that useful either as after adding the distortion, there's just so much high-end information, it just messes up the sound, if that's a word. You may want to put some reverb on this, with emphasis on the early reflections, to put the sound in a space and stop it becoming unnaturally dry. Some films I've seen recently... It's kind of weird. Feel free to ask me any questions, I have nothing else to do in my life but reply a detailed response to you guys. 